Just don't call me Pie or Pooey, and I've got a special one for you today. For this deck in front of me is not Panda Bird, and it is not my deck. This in front of me is the Cat Burn list that was played by Tommy Huta, who at the time of recording is currently top of the Dueling Book Goat Ladder at a rating of 1650. He sent this to me. He's hoping to get it out there, see if other people are willing to play it, because he thinks he's made some changes to the deck. I, for one, have been impressed with the changes he's made, and so I figured I would signal boost and share. So, what is the basic plan of the cat deck in general? In case you aren't familiar, what you're trying to do is play a rescue cat and use its ability after having activated last will. This will allow you to get an array of different monsters in the deck, including another rescue cat for another two beasts, or you can get a Sangan, or an Exiled Force, or an Injection Fairy Lily, or an additional panda that will stay on the field, or a Cyberstein, but we'll get to that later. And the idea is that you can create a lethal, or at least near lethal board, out of these four beasts, or two beasts and something else, and then finish the game up with burn, much like a standard panda burn sort of plan. We have Giant Trunade to clear the back row to make this easier. And we have Heavy Storm and Gravity Bind, which will lock down their monsters until we're ready for our Alpha Strike. Now, this deck, while somewhat similar to Panda Burn, is uh, different than Panda Burn, 
mainly in that its attacks have to be a concerted effort, and in my opinion, in general, cat decks are worse than Panda Burn, and the reason for that is this card right here, Milus Radiant. Milus Radiant says that as long as this card is face up on the field, increase the attack of all Earth monsters by 500 points, and decrease the attack of all wind by 400. We're focusing more on that first effect. Since we only have three Death Wombat, this is in fact the highest attack point target for a rescue cat, besides a boosted up Gyakugire Panda. Usually, this card is used to boost it up and deal extra damage. Here's the thing, it's garbage. Not only is this one of the worst Garnets I have ever seen, something so horrible to draw that it's just unbearable to think of compared to the things that Pandaburn is playing, but it isn't even lethal when your opponent has 8,000 life points. It does not even kill them in one shot. It is not a one-shot kill. Why is it even worth playing? I don't know. So, when Tommy started talking about the list, immediately I said in my head, if he is not playing 3 Milus, if he is only playing 2 Milus, I will know he's serious. And he is in fact playing only 1 Milus. And that's how I knew just immediately that this list was the real deal, because it has removed the worst card in the list and has replaced it with a better card. That better card being a Cyberstein. Why am I so hyped on Cyberstein here? Well, Cyberstein is a fantastic card, but it is especially fantastic as a one of that you can use when you need to within the combo. Now, we do have a lethal line. On an empty board, we can go Rescue Cat, Sacrifice Rescue Cat after Will, go Death Wombat, Death Wombat, Stein, and Stein for Master of Oz. This will deal more than enough damage, enough in fact that if your opponent has a set monster, you can attack over with one Wombat, then go in with the rest, and you'll still be close enough to lethal for almost any of these cards to do the job. He's so confident in the cat combo, this deck is only playing two trio. I haven't felt I needed it, although I might want to put a third in the sideboard. I'm not exactly sure. But he's only playing two trio here, I found that kind of interesting. Beyond that, another very unique thing he did is his sideboard. He said this is really where he made the most innovation, and I want to put a lot of attention on this Lava Golem right here. This card has been crazy kooky nuts good in ways that I was not at all expecting. Um, it removes two monsters unconditionally. Like, this is some kaiju level shit, and it's going on in GOAT format, which is just fantastic. You sacrifice two monsters on your opponent's field, and you give them this meatball instead, and it immediately deals them 1,000 damage. I want to point something out very important that happened in the replays, which is that in the game versus don't copy, um, copy Solemns to negate the Lava Golem. However, sending the two monsters to the graveyard is a cost, so his two monsters were supposed to be removed. So at the very least, this card removes monsters. More likely, it's going to be a unexpected prison piece, and a clean answer to face downs, especially considering that the deck is already main boarding to gravity bind and two level limit, you'll be able to lock this down and you'll be able to deal damage with it passively and remove their monsters, and you might be able to blow it up with Ring of Destruction. And on top of that, I discovered today that this does not say can only be special summoned, but must first be special summoned, and that means you can hit it with premature burial. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong with that, I'm just reading the cards here. Um, but I'm pretty sure you can. Today I won a game by doing that. We went premature on the golem, and then we ringed it, and it was awesome. Beyond that, he's playing three Cypher Soldier and three Mind Control. Good against Warrior, good against Turbo. Uh, burn decks in general already have a good matchup against both of these when they're not prepared. So having three of these is just fantastic. It shows how confident he is against most matchups that he can board this hard. We've got Swords of Revealing Light, Messenger to Peace for more attack prevention. We can break boards or get rid of goats if for some reason we don't want goats, which is not often. This deck has a great matchup against goats. Um, we can do so much against the goats because we have the panda, we have the just desserts, we have the barrel, but if we need to remove them or if we need to remove something else, we do have a lightning vortex. Additionally, if we got big attackers, could be Reason Gate or could be Warriors, we have Magic Cylinder, and that here is my absolute favorite. This deck is playing two Barrel Behind the Door. Barrel Behind the Door is for the Mirror. Any burn deck, you can be playing Barrel. Activate only when a card's effect would inflict damage to you. If activated, your opponent takes the damage instead. And on top of that, this is a counter trap. 
So in the same way that you could potentially, you know, use Heavy Storm or Trunade, and then you can stop their chain with a Solemn, and they can only chain one card, this will stop them from chaining. So if you're in a mirror match and you go Trunade, and they start chaining all their burn to try and kill you, you barrel, you send it back at them, and then the rest of the cards are gone, and you can do whatever you want. Important to note that these cards right here, Barrel and Just Desserts, when they do their counting, they count your stuff no matter who's taking the damage at the end. So if your board is bigger than your opponent's, you're dealing the big damage. If your board is smaller, you're not going to deal as big damage. It's not going to count their cards just because you're turning at them. So it's very important to note. And lastly, we've got Snatch Deal. Snatch Deal is a very good Yu-Gi-Oh card, especially in conjunction with Lava Golem. Give them the Golem, steal the Golem hit their face, and it's a good time. Um, cat decks have been making their way around in the meta. I have not ever been so confident in them. I've always thought Panda Burn was better. This deck scares me, especially just with this one Milas and this Cyberstein. It's a big change. I've been loving Lava Golem, um, and it's been getting major results. All of the games you saw, not my games, but Tommy Huda's games, those are all against some of the top players on the ladder right now. He showed those to me because he wanted to make it abundantly clear that this deck was the bee's knees, and boy do I believe him. I've had a great time playing the deck myself, and I hope that you are willing to try it out. So, I'd like to thank, of course, Tommy Huda for sharing this list, and as always, I'd like to thank Jinzo and Tonic for giving me the chance to share this all with you on his channel. And with that, I would like to wish you all a wonderful day.